controversy at USC over the commencement speaker this year. The school's valedictorian will not be delivering this year's address. It comes after several organizations, both on and off campus, raise concern about the student's online connection to anti-Semitic rhetoric. The core message I wanted to get across was one of hope. The valedictorian of the University of Southern California class of 2024 won't be giving a speech at graduation. Going against tradition, the school's provost wrote in an open letter that rescinding the invitation to speak was, quote, necessary to maintain the safety of our campus and students. Osna Tabasum will graduate top of her class with a major in biomedical engineering and an interdisciplinary minor in resistance to genocide. That's a program at USC that gives courses in topics like the Armenian and Rwandan genocides, the Native American experience, and the Holocaust. Tabasum told CBS News that she has not been informed of what the safety concerns are. I was never given the evidence that any safety concerns and that any security concerns were founded. Tabasum has been clear in her support for Palestinian people and asserts that she is not anti-Semitic. Years before the October 7th Hamas terrorist attack on Israel and Israel's subsequent retaliation, she shared a link on her private Instagram page that gave information regarding what was happening in Gaza. Pro-Israel student groups took their complaints about the website that Tabasim did not create or write to the school's administration. I'm not apologizing for the link that I put in my Instagram. What I am saying is that I'm committed to human rights. I'm committed to the human rights for all people. This fits a national wave of vicious suppression of pro-Palestinian voices across this country. In fact, right today, Congress is holding another hearing, dragging another university president in front of Congress to claim that they're not doing enough to stop this alleged wave of anti-Semitism on campuses. The epidemic is not of anti-Semitism, which of course is wrong and should be opposed anytime it happens. But the epidemic is a genocide being carried out in our names, backed and funded by the U.S. government, and an epidemic of suppression of those voices speaking out against it. And this has to stop. Welcome to the RNL, the Revolution Nothing Less show. Today we are broadcasting a special dispatch episode of the RNL show on April 18th, 2024. This is our 192nd episode, but we are filming it on April 17th out at the University of Southern California because this is one of the flashpoints in this country that is part of a nationwide campaign of suppression and repression against pro-Palestinian voices on college campuses. Right here at this campus, the valedictorian, Asna Tabasum, was recently canceled from speaking at the USC graduation by the college president. This is an outrage, it must be reversed, and we're gonna talk more about it in today's episode. In fact, at the heart of today's episode, we are going to share with you a special social media dispatch from the revolutionary leader and thinker Bob Avakian from his social media, at Bob Avakian Official, number 17, where he goes deeply into why the US is backing Israel's genocidal slaughter of the Palestinian people, why this government is carrying out concerted repression against pro-Palestinian voices, particularly at the elite college universities, what this reveals about the true nature of this system, and not only the need, the urgent need for revolution, but also the possibility for revolution in this time. So like I said, that will be at the heart of today's episode. We will get into a few other things along the way. But before we dive in, let me let you know that this show, The Revolution Nothing Less Show, is a show about a real revolution. The overthrow of this system of capitalism and imperialism that rules over us and causes such misery all over the world, from Gaza to the police terror and the cold streets of this country and the mass incarceration, to the denial of women's right to abortion and attacks on LGBTQ people, to the destruction of the planet and so many other crimes that are built into this system of capitalism and imperialism. This system cannot be fixed, it cannot be reformed, it must be overthrown and it can be. We here on this show promote and follow the leadership of Bob Avakian, the architect of a whole new framework of human emancipation, a whole new communism. He has forged a strategy for how revolution could really be made He's analyzed how we're living in a rare time when this revolution is more possible than it's been in generations. 
He's written a constitution for the new socialist republic that would replace the U.S. Constitution and this rotten system that we live under. And he is actively leading today to hasten and provide the pathway and the leadership so that we can advance and make this revolution. So with that, welcome to everybody tuning in for the first time and all our returning viewers. And let's dive in. All right, I'm here with Rafael Caderas. I pulled you aside for a minute um, because at the top of the show I mentioned that here at University of Southern California, the president of the school just canceled the speech at graduation of the school's own pick for valedictorian. And this is completely outrageous. Um, it's part of a nationwide campaign of suppression against pro-Palestinian voices. But I was hoping you could give a fuller picture of who is this valedictorian and what was done to cancel her here on this campus. Yeah, so first of all, we're out here in front of the Trojan horse at USC, uh, USC Trojans, and, you know, right here on this campus talking to students about this. Um, Asan Tabasam was, is the valedictorian. She had, you know, incredible grades and rose to the top of her class and was picked by the university to be the valedictorian and give the commencement speech, which happens every year for graduation. And this year, though, um, in the midst of a genocide in which Israel is slaughtering, you know, over 30,000 thousand people, almost all civilians, half of them children, the university here just decided to cancel um, her graduation speech. This Something like this has never happened before on this campus. And they're doing this, you know, uh, in the wake of a couple, you know, pro-Israel student groups on this campus accusing her of anti-Semitism for some of her social media posts for a link on her social media that says Zionism is a racist settler colonial ideology, which it is, you know, and this, but you know, we have to say bluntly, anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism. Opposing Israel is not anti-Semitism. Israel does not represent the Jewish people. In fact, as the revolutionary leader Baba Vakian said, after the Holocaust, the worst thing that has happened to the Jewish people is the state of Israel. You know, so the university right now is saying that, you know, they're canceling the speech for safety concerns. But this is a university that brought, you know, Ben Shapiro to speak on this campus. They protected him, you know, surely they can protect this speaker to deliver her commencement speech. And we're de demanding that, yes, Asna Tavisam should be allowed to speak. And everyone with a conscience, everyone who, you know, supports free speech, everyone who's opposed to this horrific genocide in Gaza, you know, should demand that she speak. And by the way, I also want to add, Asna Tavisam studied um, genocide studies here at USC. She studied the history of the Holocaust. That's part of what's motivating her to take a stand against this current genocide that Israel is waging fully backed by the United States. So this cancellation happened here. Um, you were out at protests here uh, the, the very day it happened and you were out today. Um, can you give a sense of the scene here? And the mood and the response among different kinds of students? Yeah, well, this has been shocking to a lot of students you know people are really I mean someone just came up to me you know not too long ago and just was like I am so angry about this you know and it, it people you know know her personally but a lot of people don't know her I think given Oswald's minor in genocide studies she is the perfect person to speak at commencement as valedictorian and she should have the right to do so um, I think they knew she was going to talk about the very prevalent genocide that's going on right now which is why they're asking her not to but um, um, I think because of that, she is the perfect person for this opportunity and she be allowed to speak. They can't believe that their university, which claims to, you know, uh, care about free speech, claims to care about, you know, supporting um, Muslim students, all this kind of stuff, would cancel this this student for, you know, simply opposing like what everyone can see before our eyes is a, you know, unspeakable, unconscionable slaughter in Gaza. Let her speak! Stop being weird, Islamophobic, sexist, um, hate, stop hating Palestinian people, stop hating people, period, free Palestine, and let my girl speak, period! You know, there's also, on this campus, it's very polarized, there are a lot of pro-Israel Zionist students, many of whom are very rabid and are just repeating, like, you know, pro-Israel talking points, saying that uh, all the deaths in Gaza, all the starvation, that's all because of Hamas, you know, and, you know, and Hamas is using people as human shields. This is complete bullshit, you know. Israel is 
packed people tightly into the Gaza Strip and is bombing them with 2,000 pound bombs. You know, that's the reality. Of course, Hamas is connected to the civilian people, but that does not give you a right to mass murder people, you know. We're also seeing a lot of people who are just like, they're hearing the news about this, you know, and they want to come up and find out what's going on. We have a big sign that says, anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism. People are coming up and asking, well, what is Zionism? What is, what is, what does anti-Semitism mean? What are the definitions and all this? Just trying to understand, people trying to educate themselves on this. We're also letting people know and getting out to people this new compendium from the revolutionary leader Bob Avakian about Israel, Palestine, the Middle East, U.S. imperialism, and real revolution. This is actually a time when people are and need to even more be asking big questions about about what's happening in the world, why is it happening, um, where are the real interests of humanity. Baba Vakin gets into this in depth in this pamphlet with his work over decades on these questions. We're going to go in a minute to a social media dispatch from Baba Vakian that goes, that sheds light on why this suppression is happening, this kind of suppression, um, because a lot of students don't really understand it. This is a big question. Students and faculty we've spoken to, but I was wondering one more thing, maybe you could fill in the picture, because this suppression here is part of a nationwide pattern. Today, as we film, it's Wednesday, April 17th, we're filming. Um, there was a congressional hearing this morning dragging another university president, this time from Columbia University, before Congress um, to go after her and insist that she crack down even harder against pro-Palestinian voices on campus, even though she's carried out tremendous suppression already. Um, this, is, this is part of a bigger pattern. Maybe you could fill it in a bit more. Yeah, well, like Columbia University, where you're talking about um, in New York, the president had already banned the Students for Justice in Palestine, banned the Jewish uh, Voice for Peace group on campus, and had literally just recently um, suspended several students, kicked, gave them 24 hours to get out of the dorms because they hosted a program on resistance in Palestine that was unauthorized by the university. At Vanderbilt, and I believe it's in Tennessee, students were expelled from that school for protesting for Palestine. Not too far from here in Southern California, Pomona College, 20 students were arrested. More than a dozen students have been detained during a protest at Pomona College in support of Palestinians in Gaza. For doing a sit-in in the president's office demanding that the university divest its investments from supporting you know, companies that support this genocide. So as you said, this is part of a major nationwide attack on pro-Palestinian voices. No one should accept it. It's very important that everyone on this campus and nationwide demand that Asna Tabasam be restored as the commencement speaker at USC. And it's also very important, I'm very excited to hear that just this morning at 4 a.m., hundreds of uh, students at Columbia University in New York set up a tent city in the middle of their campus openly in defiance of the crackdown at that school. As I said, people here in this school and nationwide have no idea why this is happening. And they see it as isolated points as opposed to this pattern that you're describing. And this is something that Bob Avakian speaks to with more depth than anybody. And we want to play his dispatch from the social media, um, from his social media, where he gets into what is driving this and the vulnerability it actually exposes of this system. All right. Bob Avakian, revolution. Number 17, further exposing the reality behind the myth of American exceptionalism, the ridiculous and outrageous notion that there is something exceptionally good about this country and its great American democracy. In reality, this great democracy is actually a system of brutal exploitation and murderous oppression the system of capitalism 
imperialism enforced by the dictatorship of the capitalist class, which, on the basis of its dominant position economically, controls the political process and the police and military that violently enforce this system. Contrary to what is constantly proclaimed by representatives of this capitalist ruling class and its media, its propaganda machinery, the people in this country don't govern themselves. They are governed, ruled over, by a class of capitalist exploiters. What is proclaimed as the heart and essence of this so-called great democracy, the right of people to choose their leaders through free and fair elections, really just comes down to the right to choose between political parties that represent the same system of capitalism imperialism. The whole history of this country down to today, not the distorted and whitewashed history taught in textbooks and portrayed in the dominant media and culture, but the actual history and reality of this country and its role in the world provides profound, undeniable proof of the real, truly monstrous nature of this country and this system. In previous messages, I have shined a light on some of these horrors, and I have pointed to works of mine and others at Revcom.us, in particular the American Crime Series, which get into this more fully and deeply. As I said in my last message, no honest person could read these works at Revcom.us and continue to parrot the perverse notion of the USA as exceptionally good. And what is going on right now is providing further living proof that this so-called great American democracy is in reality a dictatorship where the power of the ruling institutions is used to viciously persecute, punish, and even eliminate people who pose a threat to the interests of the ruling class. Along with the murder by police and mass incarceration of thousands and millions of people in this country, which is continuing as you are listening to this, there is the vicious repression being brought down against people protesting the genocide in Palestine carried out by Israel with the full backing of the U.S. government and both ruling class political parties, Democrat and Republican. Colleges, and especially elite universities, have been a focus of this repression. Repression which has crudely violated supposed rights of free speech and standards of academic freedom. Students and faculty have been targeted, and even university presidents have been driven out of their positions for failing to fully repress these protests. Why is this happening? Because fundamental interests of U.S. capitalism and imperialism are at stake because Israel plays a special role as a heavily armed bastion of support for U.S. imperialism in a strategically important part of the world, the Middle East. And Israel has been a key force in the commission of atrocities which have helped to maintain the oppressive rule of U.S. imperialism in many other parts of the world. And this repression is happening because representatives of the ruling class in this country have a definite sense that if youth, especially at elite universities, begin to seriously question and act against what this system is doing, if the system loses the allegiance of large numbers of those students, that can be a big factor in creating a real crisis for the system as a whole, as happened in the 1960s. A crisis that now more than ever 
this system really cannot afford when the whole country is already being torn apart by deep divisions with bitter clashes right among the ruling powers. So, at the same time as they are bitterly divided, the ruling powers of this country are firmly united in their determination to punish and intimidate especially students at elite universities who have stepped forward to protest the genocidal slaughter of Palestinians. The ruling class is desperate to prevent opposition to its fundamental interests from spreading and involving masses of people from all parts of society. All this reveals more nakedly than in normal situations the actual dictatorship behind the outer shell of democracy of this country. And it shines a light on the strategic weakness of this system when it does lose the allegiance of major sections of the people. And this has the potential to spread to all parts of society, including among the dominant institutions of this system. I'll be coming back soon with more truth you need to know. Truth the powers that be are determined to keep from you. The truth beneath the claim that this country is continuing to create a more perfect union. All right, so I pulled Michelle Chai, one of the leaders of the RevCom Corps for the Emancipation of Humanity, out of the fray for just a few minutes because I wanted you to talk with our viewers about what is in the uh, planning right now for Revolutionary Internationalist May Day. This is an important revolutionary holiday celebrated by people who want fundamental change in a whole different world for over 100 years all over the world. Um, tell us what is planned here in Los Angeles this uh, May Day. So this May Day, um, we're going to do a rally and a march and then a celebration here in Los Angeles. We want to project a serious, disciplined, organized force for a real revolution. So Sunday, May 5th, we're going to be at Jim Gilliam Park and we're going to rally there and then we're going to march with the slogans, we need, we demand revolution for a whole new way to live, a fundamentally different system. Stop the U.S.-Israeli genocide of Palestinians now. Stop capitalism, imperialism from stealing our future. All right, and I know that RevComs are organizing um, gatherings for May Day around the country. They'll be posted at RevCom.us. Michelle, I wanted to ask you what makes this May Day, this year, 2024, so much um, even more important and more urgent for people to come out to. Because this is happening at a very particular historical juncture. Yeah, I mean, there's Bob Avakian's analysis of the time that we're living in right now, right? That he says this is a rare time when revolution come, could become more possible, right? And so we are acting on that. We have to actually bring forward, and we're coming from behind, but we have to bring forward a serious organization. We have to bring forward a serious uh, uh, core of thousands, right? Bob Avakian has said with thousands organized into the ranks of the revolution, millions can be won to revolution. And with millions won to revolution, there could be a real possibility for this revolution to win. So this is what we're aiming to to cohere and to project on May Day. And, you know, and at the core of how people are being cohered and how, you know, they're being one to this revolution is digging into the dispatches from Bob Avakian number one through 11. And we've been doing some of this, you know, the, uh, getting into the content of that, listening to that together and being part of getting out in society to spread, uh, getting out into society, to the campuses, to the neighborhoods of the oppressed, getting out and spreading this revolution. So on on you know and, and you think about you know the the struggle that we're actually waging right now with you know with people about going to the actual root of the problem there is a system of capitalism imperialism that 
that is causing all of these horrors you know that is destroying the environment that is waging this genocidal war against the people in palestine right like this is the problem and the solution to this is an actual revolution we have to be in position to lead millions of people to go for revolution all right um who should come who should come to May Day? What's your call? Well, look, everybody who is is watching, you know, we're out here at USC today. I talked to some students that are agonizing about looking at seeing the more than 33,000 people that are being slaughtered, you know, in the palm of our hands. We are watching a genocide. People that are agonizing over this. People that are sick and tired of living in a world where people are treated as less than human. People that actually want to dig for answers and, and actually understand the root of where this is coming from and that and their sights are being lifted to a possibility to live a whole different way everybody you know whether you're on the college campus or whether you're in the neighborhoods of the oppressed wherever you are you know connect up with the ref comes and and join these protests as you're learning about it look you may still have lots of questions you may still be yourself learning about this but we have we have to act right now together as you're learning more about this revolution and I know at the core of this, you are fighting to build the RevCom core for the emancipation of humanity. I should say we are fighting to build it. This is the key organization right now for people to get with, to live by the points of attention that have been put out for this revolution, to fight to spread this revolution, to dig into Bob Avakian's leadership in these social media dispatches, and to make a leap in getting organized. The first initial core is towards the thousands needed to win millions to revolution and be in position if the chance opens up to make this revolution real. So I want to thank you, Michelle, for coming on. If you have any final words. Yeah, join us uh, this April 28th. We're going to do a fundraising live stream, 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, get all your friends and contacts and let them know we're raising funds to make this May Day happen. All right. Thanks so much. All right, so Raphael, I brought you back to close out the show with me, and unfortunately, there's just one more thing. It's really shameful we have to even talk about it. It's shameful that it happened, but because it happened, we need to talk about it, which is that here on this campus, right at the height of this repression, right at the moment when everybody who cares about Gaza, who cares about Palestine, who cares about freedom of speech, who wants to stop the crimes of their government, should be uniting all who can be united to stand up against this cancellation of Asna Tabasum as valedictorian speaker, right at this time when people should be looking into the kinds of things we just heard Bob Avakian speak to, why is this happening? What's driving this? And what must be done about this? Instead, right here on this campus, six organizations claiming to represent the voices of the Palestinian struggle put out a concerted, coordinated attack on the Revcoms and Bob Avakian on their Instagram feed. And uh, I'm going to uh, characterize some of what they said they wrote they wanted to let the community know that they are not affiliated with us and that um, we might at first appear to be pro-palestinian we might at first appear to be promoting abolitionist ideology as they put it actually revolutionary uh, ideology and strategy um, but in fact they warn we hold a cult-like agenda and follow a leader named Baba Vakian and then they go on and they claim that we're messianic that um, they would never promote the idea of fighting for an ultimate freedom because this is a totalitarian belief system. It's just filled with uh, 1950s anti-communist McCarthyite uh, anti-communism and other scurrilous, slanderous, dishonest attacks. Um, I think it'd be important for us to speak to this briefly before we close out the show. Yeah, and you forgot one other thing they said, which is that we're uh, supposedly harassing uh, Muslim and Palestinian, pro-Palestinian students on this campus, which is, you know, <laughs> is complete 
bullshit. Pretty much everything in their statement is complete bullshit. I mean, just on that point, we've had, you know, uh, Arab, Muslim, Palestinian students coming to uh, up to us all week saying how thankful that they are that we're out here, you know, calling out this, you know, the university's cancellation of Asna Tabasam, standing against this genocide in Gaza. Um, but, you know, what is this... Uh, Instagram posts from them represent it's you know it's just played out McCarthyite anti-communism the danger of the communists fighting for ultimate freedom it's totalitarian they're trying to recruit vulnerable people it's intended to scare people away from thinking critically for themselves from using their own brains to evaluate what we're about you know and just to be clear what are we about the revcoms we're about uniting everyone who can be united to actually stop this genocide that's happening right before our eyes the revcoms Bob Avakian have an analysis of of why this is happening, how it's rooted in the system of capitalism, imperialism, and crimes like this will keep going on until we overthrow this system through an actual revolution. You know, and in, in particular, you know, I just have to say uh, uh, the attacks on Baba Vakian for being some messianic cult leader, this is like especially outrageous. Baba Vakian is someone who for decades, since most of these students were born, has been fighting this fucking system. He has a, a profound analysis which people should get into about why the the Middle East is the way it is how the colonial and imperial powers divided it up how the system of capitalism is giving rise to religious fundamentalism in the world how the United States and Islamic forces are fighting each other but they're also reinforcing each other even while they're fighting and a, a vision and a strategy for how we can get beyond this system and actually bring forward another way for humanity no not the high tech slaughter of Israel and the United States States or the Dark Ages religious fundamentalism of Hamas and the Islamic Republican Republic of Iran. We can do so much better. And these people are slandering Baba Vakian's character and it needs to stop. Anyone with a conscience, anyone who thinks that people should actually be able to discuss and debate ideas and not have this McCarthyite scare tactics that, frankly, the Zionists on this campus and, you know, the administration would be proud, you know, or these right-wing heritage foundation types would be proud of of what these, uh, you know, so-called social justice, justice for Palestine groups are doing, attacking the Revcoms, telling people they should be off our campus. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, first of all, I really agree with that. It's important. And people who are not afraid of the truth, as we've stressed on this show many times, should get into Bob Avakian's work and leadership for yourself. This is somebody of tremendous principle. Tremendous heart for humanity and really um, penetrating science and hardcore commitment to all the way emancipation for people here and all over the world. And, you know, he stands out for being willing to engage and debate differences from the loftiest plane mm -hmm. so that people understand what's going on and to serve our unity where we can unite again in the struggle for justice, but also to get to the roots of what it's going to take to get all the way free. All right, so you um, were actually with some students who were part of these groups last night when this attack was first published. You read it together with them, and I think it'd be interesting to share with our viewers some of what the, their response to it was, what your discussion with them was. Yeah, some of these students who are affiliated with these groups were surprised by the attack, but also dissociated themselves a little bit from it. But what they need to do is actually call on the group that they're part of to retract their attack on the Revcoms and Baba Vakian and take it down off their Instagram page. Um, you know, but I, in talking to some of these students, um, it became more clear what the actual difference is. You know, they use these you know, uh, scare words, cult, messianic leader, all this stuff, making up lies and slander and all this. But that's to cover over an actual difference that these groups have, which talking to some of these students, it became more clear. They were saying, look, some of us are, uh, radicals, socialists, communists, anarchists. We talk about this among ourselves, but we don't bring that into the public square. Um, in fact, we, you know, we don't, we even moderate how much we use words like genocide. Because look, this is a, you know, as they put it, this is a conservative campus. There's a lot of Zionists on this campus. Um, and we don't want too much pushback on us. We don't want to rock the boat too much. And we want to work with the administration on divestment. And if we make our language too radical, um, then it, it might upset that. And that's part of what they're so concerned with about us being on campus, putting boldly forward, you know, what's at the root of this, the system of capitalism, what's needed, revolution, leadership to make that revolution. That's a, that is disruptive of the strategy that they're pursuing. And, and, the, and the fact is 
that what USC administration is going to do is going to be more determined by the hearings in Congress and the overall interests of U.S. imperialism in carrying out this war and suppressing the voices, as you heard Baba Vakin talk about in that dispatch, of students out of fear that they could lose their allegiance to this empire. That is more determinant about to what USC administration is going to do than whether you moderate your language of genocide or anything else. Yeah, there's bigger things that are coming. There's radical change that's in the offing that these students think that they're just pursuing their little, uh, you know, strategy of transformation on the campus, you know, within this. But they're not really thinking about that bigger picture. And they don't, some of them don't want to think about that bigger picture. But I told them, look, you know, because they were, they wanted, they were willing to talk. I said, look, you know, we can have a debate about reform or revolution. We can have a debate about the strategy for, you know, what it's going to take to stop this genocide in Gaza. Those are good conversations to have. But that's, and that's needed, frankly. We need a huge debate on, at USC and on college campuses throughout the country about reform or revolution. That's even more important now than it's ever been as these, you know, <laughs> radical changes are happening in the world, you know. Um, but that's very different from, you know, uh, this Instagram post attacking Baba Vake and the Revcom, just spreading lies and slander. And aiming to shut down that debate and shut down thinking. So um, even though it's a shameful reason we had to do it, I think it was important to take a minute on this. Um, I want to thank you, Raphael, for helping with this special dispatch, this special episode of the RNL show out here at USC campus. Um, I want to thank the crew for doing this on the fly. Remind you also that April 28th, we will be doing a nationwide fundraising Zoom right here on this channel at 2 p.m. Pacific to raise money for Internationalist Revolutionary May Day. And our gathering here in this uh, in Los Angeles, but also the mobilization nationwide. And um, keep checking our channel. If you don't subscribe yet, subscribe. Hit the notification buttons. Be looking because we may have other dispatches in the days to come. And we will be back next Thursday for our regular episode. Um, we'll see you then. <laughs>